Welcome back to the Take Me Later podcast. I am your host, Noah Rubin, and today Adam King is going to join me once again to break down this Roto mock that we're doing way, way too early. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. And just quickly before I bring Kingy in, I just wanted to remind you that support for this Fantasy Basketball International podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Shaving your jewels doesn't have to be risky business anymore thanks to Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. This trimmer is all about keeping things smooth and safe so you can trim with confidence. Treat your wrinkle berries and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com to get 20% off plus free shipping with the code FBI20. With Manscaped, it is easy grooming, no surprises. We know every dude gets the heebie-jeebies when it's time for a close shave down under, especially when using the wrong tools. That's precisely why Manscaped is my go-to for those delicate spots. Trust me, this trimmer will be your crown jewel's new best buddy. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code FBI20 at manscaped.com. That is 20% off plus free shipping with the code FBI20 at manscaped.com. Show your balls some love and feel free as a dove as i said this is noah rubin and i'm going to go ahead and bring in adam king uh to join me it's much earlier where he is mm -hmm. than it is where i am uh so he is waking up as i'm finishing up my day and we're gonna just finish up talking about this roto mock but before i pull that up kingy how are you uh very good mate um yeah nice and early here um wife's away for work so i'm on uh full dad duty uh, for a couple of days, but something I've got to get used to because she's going to be away for about two months soon. So uh, it's going to be a, a lot of running around after kids and, and that sort of thing. But that's that's fine. That's that's why you have kids. Yeah, and hopefully you, it's not all just super hectic for you. And hopefully there are some fun moments along the way in there. I'm assuming that. I mean, what's the ratio look like with that? How, how much is it a lot of fun versus? Oh my gosh, I'm having to do this all by myself. Um, oh, it's a pretty good balance at this point. I mean, my kids, my kids are, are older. I mean, I know we've got a lot of analysts that we have on our shows who have little kids running around. I don't. Uh, I have. By the time she's away, they'll be 14 and 17. So pretty self sufficient. Um, it's more getting them to the bus for school and um, yeah, and and yeah, taking them to friends' places and things like that. So. Uh, no, it, it will be it will be fun, um, and I mean, as I said, they're, they'll be at school for a, a lot of that time. So um, it'll just be business as usual for most of the day. Just a, a bit of extra legwork in the morning and in the afternoon. Yeah, that's good. And we will go ahead and get into this mock. We'll get back into this mock because last time we covered the first six rounds. Now we'll cover the final six rounds, and it's going to look. A little different on the screen just because the draft's over, so the draft board doesn't look as pretty, doesn't fit in there. So this, this will give everyone watching you know, the best chance to see all of the picks. Um, but we'll start. We'll just go ahead and get into it. Uh, round seven. Uh, so it started off with Herb Jones, then went Julius Randle, Anyaka Kongwu, Denny Avdija, Keegan Murray. You went Mark Williams. I went Jabari Smith. Then Bradley Beal, Austin Reeves. Anthony Simons, Jalen Green, and D'Angelo Russell. A lot of offense to finish up that round without much defense at all. Kingy, how do you feel about how round seven went? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're entering sort of that, that area of the draft now where rankings are not really – I mean, they're relevant, but they're not as relevant um, because we're – what do we so pick – I don't know, 70, something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't 70s, know 80s. Yeah, 70. So um, – at this point, yeah, a top 80 player could very well be a top 140 player and vice versa. So, um, yeah, you're going to see a few people taking some risks and some people just sort of shoring up after maybe taking a couple of flyers early on. So I went with Mark Williams. That was a little bit out of necessity because I needed to fill my centre spot. And as we talked about last week, for some reason, Anthony Day – ah, sorry, Christoph Porzingis – is not a center <laughs> and and there's quite a few players that aren't centers yet but that's because we're so early so i just took a center here um 
Mark Williams, look, I, th- I thought he looked pretty good before he got injured last year. And, and then obviously we know that he had all the back stuff and Charlotte just, they're known for not sort of being very transparent with injury reports. So there's my, maybe a little bit of a risk here, but given he won't have played for, what, 10 months by the time the season rolls around, fingers crossed he's ha- he's healthy, his back's good and... Um, yeah, I think I think Nick Richards was a good fill in for them last year. I think it was a good opportunity for him, but I still think Mark Williams is the, the center that they want to um they want to roll out there as the starter and see what they've got there. So um yeah, I'm okay taking Mark Williams here, um hoping that he'll be healthy. Yeah, no, I, I like the pick. I think that is just the big question mark with him. If he's on the floor, he's been really good. Just being on the floor has been an issue through his first two seasons in the league. Hopefully them adding another lottery talent and hopefully just planning to be a little bit more competitive this year will help him stay on the floor. And also hopefully he can just stay healthy. I mean, that's just kind of a factor that we need when we're playing fantasy basketball, we need health to be on our side. Um, I went Jabari Smith. I genuinely just think he's going to be a little bit better this upcoming season. Um, I don't think he's going to make big statistical leaps where he's averaging 20 points and 10 rebounds or anything like that. But I think small improvements and efficiency improvements, kind of like what he did this year, uh, enough for me to be totally fine taking him in the middle of round seven. Pretty well-rounded production. Uh, Not great at anything yet, but hopefully he can make a few improvements uh, throughout the course of this upcoming season to justify this pick a little bit. Um, Bradley Beal falling down to 80. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I just think it's kind of interesting to see him going at 80, considering what he was just a few years ago, watching those players that that happens to where they just drop off uh, really fast. Just always interesting to see. But I think the most interesting pick of this round uh, was Denny Avdia, who went 76. And I have no issues with him going that early, but considering what he, like he was kind of a later round guy, Heading into last season, he was obviously really good, especially down the stretch. How do you feel about Denny in uh, around? I mean, it was pick seventy six. Uh, yeah, look, I don't mind it. And as I said, by the by the time we hit this sort of seventh round in the draft, you take a bit of a chance if you want to. Um, so I'm just looking at who took him. Where are we? Seventh round to have a look at the team. Um, so Dan Thunder Dan. Uh, Palio took him. So his first, well, his team to that point is Luca, Darren Fox, Shingun, Kobe White, Siakam, Ingram. I guess we sort of know who all these guys are. Kobe White, a little bit, I mean, we know who he was last season, but let's see what he looks like with a healthy Levine and maybe Lonzo. I mean, we're, we're hearing that he's at least trying to get back to, to play. So, um, yeah, I don't mind um, Avdia here. I think you're sort of counting on Washington being pretty bad again, which I, I think that'll be the case. Um, I don't, you would know, I don't know what their draft picks look like this season. Um, but they have the second pick and I think also the 26th, somewhere around that late okay. first round. So, okay. So second pick, but yeah, whether I don't, I don't really see anyone in this draft sort of coming in and turning this team into a contender or anything like that. <laughs> no. So, um, yeah, so look, I think they saw enough from Avdia last season to, to, I guess, take a bit of a chance on him as potentially as a, a starter long term, and, and let's see. So yeah, no problems with with Avdia here uh, at all. Bit of a risk, but it could pay off as well. Yeah, um, you know, like I said, finish off the season really strong. I had a couple of big games. He obviously like missed a little bit of time due to injury, but um, kind of everyone was in Washington as their season was coming to a close. Um, but he did have, I guess he, he was able to play through their last game, but did miss a little bit of time before that. He had a 24, 12 and eight game, a 32, 10, five, two, three game, a 22 and 12 game. Like granted it's silly season time. Uh, he did have, I think a 40, yeah, 43, 15 game just before the all-star break. So, a number of big performances. Hopefully we can get enough consistent 
consistency out of him and kind of out of the team with rotations. I'm not expecting consistency. I have Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzma, but like consistent role for, for Denny to be able to continue to produce to justify this pick a little bit. Cause I think it's the talents there. I um, mean, he, he was able to finally show it last season. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a few things he needs to work on, but um, yeah. And maybe this is fractionally high. I'd, I'd be more comfortable probably top 100, but um, yeah, I, th- I think he can be sort of a, a guy that gets you, uh, he's not going to be a 20 point score or 24 point score or anything like that, but he, he might sort of be 16, 17 points and, um, he's a good rebounder. He can pass the ball. It's probably just those free throws for him. I'm just looking here. He's sort of consistently in the mid seventies to low to mid seventies. If he can get that up to closer to 80, um, which I, I see no reason he couldn't do that. Then that probably bumps him up a little bit. So, um, yeah, I don't mind the pick. Yeah, no, I'm totally fine with it. Another factor. He played 75 games. All those miss were after the all-star break. Um, but he never was fully shut down. It was just dealing with some injuries after there. So pretty readily available. It's also a nice uh, factor to consider. Um, moving into round eight, started off with Walker Kessler. Then went Drew Holiday, Jonathan Kuminga, Daniel Gafford, Chris Middleton, Tyler Hero, Marcus Smart, Michael Porter Jr., PJ Washington, Josh Giddy, Yusuf Nurkic, and ended with Bogdan Bogdanovich. What stuck out to you here, Kingy? Uh yeah, well, so so I went with Marcus Smart. You went with Tyler Hero. Uh, so back to back guards. Um, what stood out? Look, Kessler. I guess if we think back twelve months, he was sort of one of the. I wouldn't say a fantasy darling, but he was he was certainly going a lot higher than this based on what we saw during his rookie season, um, and and I guess subsequently based on what we saw during his sophomore season, he's now going closer to pick a hundred. So. Um, interesting. Like he could, we know he can be a top fifty player if if he's given minutes. It's it's just what is his role going to look like? We're not sure. Um, Daniel Gafford at eighty eight. I feel like that's pretty good. I think his role is pretty set. I do think they'll lean a little bit more or start to lean a bit more on Derek Lively um, as we move forward. Whether that's next year or not, I don't know. But. Um, but yeah, I, I I prefer Lively over Gafford long term, but um, but Gafford's fine there. Um, Josh Giddy, another player that has probably tumbled down the ranks a little bit, and yeah, I think I think at ninety four that's fine. Um, it it really depends on where he ends up. If he stays in OKC, he probably doesn't hit this mark. But if he's moved somewhere where he can start and get the ball in his hands a bit more like he was during his rookie season, sophomore season, I, I think this is a good spot to land him. Um, and for me, Marcus Smart coming off a season that was obviously ruined by injury, but I, I thought he looked pretty good early in the season. He, he was right up there in terms of um, steals, leading the league in steals. And that's why I took him here, just to shore up my steals and assists and – Yeah, he's not going to score a lot, but as we talked about last week, I'm sort of leaning into a punt points build, so I'm not too concerned there if I can just get some threes, assists and steals from him. And I don't know, you you figure that Memphis was so destroyed by injuries last season that um, this season will be one where they're healthy and they're sort of pushing for a top four in the West, Um, and Marcus Smart is going to be a big part of that. So... Yeah, so I, I was happy to get smart here. Um, feels fairly safe as long as he's healthy. Yeah, and I'm assuming since Memphis should, unless they just have a bunch of devastating injuries again, they should be more competitive, which means Marcus Smart should be on the floor more. Yeah. Um, like you said, as long as he stays healthy, should be good to go. So I like that pick. I went hero just to get some late round scoring. It seemed like a lot of the. Like, I mean, I kind of mentioned as I was reading out round seven, a lot of the guys that are really good offensively that don't do much defensively kind of went at the end of that round. And I was able to get Tyler Hero, who kind of fits in that same category with Anthony Simon, Jalen Green, D'Angelo Russell, uh, six, seven picks later. So totally fine with that. Um, I'm happy to get him, even though I'm, I now have two Heat players with him and Jimmy Butler. That's not an issue or anything. But um, getting his scoring um, that late, pretty good with me um we'll see 
if he is a guy that gets traded. I don't think, I mean, his name's always in rumors, but I don't think there's anything imminent, but could happen if Miami wants to try and bring in a true third star next to Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo or trades for another reason, because we had plenty of media comments from Pat Riley about Jimmy Butler and Tyler Hero shortly after the season ended. I mean, so that'll be something to keep an eye on. Um, Jonathan Kuminga, I really like that pick from Dan Titus, um, 87th for Kuminga. I think whether or not, like, I don't know that he's the guaranteed starter, but I imagine, like, especially down the stretch, he was a starter. So I imagine that they'll go into next season with him in the starting lineup. Um, And as long as he's starting, I'm very, very fine with that pick. I know for a while we were just kind of waiting on Draymond Green to get out to feel good about Kuminga, but they were starting both. So, no, I, I like that pick a lot. Yeah, Kaminga's interesting. I think, um, again, 12 months ago, even even sort of as we were in the first month or two of the season, people were a bit unsure about what Kaminga's role would look like. He, was, he wasn't out of the rotation, but he wasn't being utilised a lot. And he sort of, well, he, along with injuries, forced Steve Kerr's hand. They, they just had to play him and he thrived. Like he, he was really good over the back half of the season and, where I mean, we're already hearing the rumors about Clay Thompson wanting a three-year deal mm-hmm. and uh, that sort of thing, and common sense would hope that the Warriors don't offer him a three-year deal um, for significant money. But you never know. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of history there, so we will have to wait and see which direction they go in and, and do they part ways with with him. What happens with Draymond Green? I mean, Steph's going to stay; he's not going anywhere, but. Um, do they build around, well, Steph for a short amount of time, but Clay, um, Kaminga and uh, Trace Jackson Davis and Pajemski, these guys? And if so, if Kaminga's starting and playing big minutes, I, I think he's a great pick here inside the top 90. Yeah, and it's kind of crazy. Like it, um, barely early last season, it was, up to the, it was to the point where he was requesting a trade yeah. because – like Steve Kerr didn't believe in him anymore. And like, that's what he was saying and his camp was saying. And now he's like pretty clearly, I'd say part of their future. Like one of the few guys that you're saying, okay, he's definitely here long-term um, along with a few of their other young guys. But um, we'll move on to round nine where it started with Dante DiVincenzo and then went Tobias Harris, Shaden Sharp, Isaiah Hartenstein, Alex Caruso. You went John Collins. I went Tyus Jones. And then it went Jordan Poole, Trace Jackson Davis, Nas Reed, Jalen Suggs, and Jakob Hurdle. What stuck out to you, Kingy? Uh, uh, yeah, all right. Where are we? So probably, I don't know. I like Hartenstein here. Um, I had him on my queue, and I probably would have taken him if he was available. Um, if, again, we're, we're not 100% set on what are the Knicks going to do. Are they going to role with him as the starter or do they go back to Mitch Robinson starting and Hartenstein off the bench? Hartenstein was great down the stretch uh, when Robinson was injured. Uh, he ended, I know I, I did look where he was. I know he had a really good year. Uh, so he was the 75th ranked player for the season in 25 minutes a game. Does he get to 25 minutes again if Mitch Robinson's healthy? Potentially not. He might be closer to 20, which probably puts him outside the top 100, but um, doesn't score a lot, basically gets you a double-double with a steal and a block, pretty efficient from the free throw line for a big. Um, So his floor is pretty safe as long as he's getting 20, 22 minutes. Uh, And Mitch Robinson's never healthy, let's be honest. He's always got something going on. So, uh, yeah, I think Hartenstein is is pretty good here at pick 100. I went with John Collins, which I'm not excited about, but I just needed – I just want to get some rebounds and maybe some defensive stuff and try and get another big that doesn't destroy my free throw percentage. Um, and I thought John Collins was pretty good last year in Utah. I, I thought he had a decent season after you being an Atlanta fan. You would have seen the the years of sort of disappointment and, and – um, not fitting in, and he was on the trade block for about three years, it felt like. So I thought he was okay. So, yeah, I'm not super excited about him here, but 
Uh, I mean, we know he can be a top 50 player if everything falls into place. It's probably not going to happen. But, um, yeah, I, I don't mind him here, but I don't really have a lot of, of thought uh, or, or many thoughts on taking him here because it's not that exciting. No, it's not the most exciting pick, but I do think, especially in the second half of the year, he was starting to get back to not his peak because mm. his peak was first-round value, but that's just not who he is, um, but a really good fantasy player. So I think it's not a – I mean, it's a it's a safe pick. It's like a good value pick, I'd say. Um, mm. I went Tyus Jones for the same reason. He's not very exciting, but one getting assists in the later round was nice. Um, the other factor is Jordan Poole went one pick after and Tyus Jones was much better all season and Jordan Poole really kind of took off after Tyus Jones went down. So when they're both healthy, Jordan Poole's either going to be a sixth man or starting at shooting guard, which was not, not a good spot for him. Whereas Tyus Jones got off to a little bit of a slow start next year, but ended up finishing as a top 75 guy. So happy to take his efficient assists um, in round nine. And I'm assuming like they're not taking a point guard at two. Like I really think it's either going to be Alex Sar or Zachary Risa Shea. Um, so that's either a wing or a, or a big. So not affecting Tyus Jones, not expecting anybody else to take Tyus Jones minutes away. Um, I think in this round, Trace Jackson Davis definitely stuck out a little bit to me because I don't know that he's necessarily starting day one. I think it just kind of depends on what other moves are kind of made throughout the mm. summer. Um, what do you kind of think about Trace Jackson Davis here? Yeah, I looked at him here as well. Um, and I know he had some moments last season, but yeah, look, I mean, it could end up being a great pick, but I'm just not, I'm not set on him yet. Um, as you said, we don't know if he'll start. We don't know if he'll come off the bench. It, it really depends on what their roster looks like. Um, I mean, I, think the whole Kevon Looney thing is done. Like I, I don't think yeah. that they'll start here. I mean, you never know. But um, it would make sense to start Trace Jackson Davis, but he also is a little bit undersized um, as a as a pure big. He, he's obviously very athletic. He runs the floor well, um, can defend. Is he a long-term starting calibre centre that can play on a team that wants to compete? I, I'm not sure, but again... Outside the top 100, take a flyer. Let's see what happens. And it's a mock draft, and it's June. Oh yeah, <laughs> I guess that's another factor yeah. as well. It's kind of important to consider. Um, yeah, maybe it would be a little bit different in a money league in yeah, I'll say early October. Um, but we'll go ahead and move on to round the final three rounds. The latter half of this draft. Just sliding that down there so I can get back to it. Um, round 10, we started with Scoot Henderson, Derek Lively, Cam Thomas, Keontae George, Terry Rozier. Then I went Grayson Allen. You went Mike Conley, Josh Hart, Bobby Portis, Asar Thompson, RJ Barrett, and Jeremy Grant. A lot of young guys here, as well as a handful of old guys. We leaned on the older side with our picks. Um, how did you kind of feel about either this round or your pick or both? Um, yeah, I mean, we're really getting into the weeds now um, as we enter sort of 110, 120. Um, Derek Lively went to, to Alex Reclean. I like that pick. Uh, I think the upside is there for him to, to be a easily a top 100 player if they decide to play him as the starter, starter and play him 26 minutes, 27, and Gafford 20, 21. Um, we, we saw that in the playoffs. He averages double-double. Uh, good defender. Brings a lot of energy to the floor. So so I like the lively pick here. Um, yes, I mean, speaking of boring picks, Mike Conley, I went with at 115. Uh, very boring. But, look, I had him this year in a lot of teams. Um, I I took him basically with my last pick in, in a lot of those leagues, uh, and he ended up being a top 70 player. Um, as I said, not exciting at all. 11.5 points, 6 assists, 1.2 steals, 2.4 threes, 91% from the line. I feel like the Wolves are probably going to run it back next season. They're, they're not going to really make a lot of changes. And despite the fact that Conley is a year older, um, 
we saw this season when he was out, they I won't say they struggled necessarily, but they were nowhere near as efficient, nowhere near as good with him off the floor. And obviously, Anthony Edwards, his ability to handle the ball, we saw that increase this season and, and will continue to do so. But I still think they need Conley on the floor. So he might not be a top 70 player next season, but could certainly be a top 100 player. Um, he doesn't. He knows his body, he knows his skill set, he doesn't push himself too hard. So at this point, although he is older, unless he gets an unlucky injury, which you never know, he does seem to be able to manage himself. The team manages him quite well. So, um, yeah, really really safe, uh, sort of just shoring up some of those guard stats here uh, at the back end. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely going to start and he'll get you assists. He won't turn the ball over and he'll hit threes. I think that's a great pick even though it's not necessarily the most fun pick. No. Um, I went with Grayson Allen because, I mean, he had a really, really good season. I can't imagine them trading him after the season he had. He kind of fits well um, in with this team, I think, um, as like a floor spacer to give these other scores the chance to operate. Um, I'm not expecting him to be quite as good as he was this year, but anywhere close would be phenomenal. A lot of young guys went, um, as I mentioned, four guys that will be heading into year two with Scoot, Lively, Keontae George, and Asar Thompson. Um, I forget the coach's name, but the Pistons just got the shooting coach or the assistant coach from New Orleans that was working on Lonzo's shot, Brandon Ingram's shot, or Jones' shot, and obviously helped their percentages a lot while he was there. Um, so hopefully – that turns Asar Thompson into a slightly competent shooter because right now we know he can defend and rebound really well, but the shot is insanely bad. So if he can get to the point where he's knocking down open threes, I think that opens up a lot for his game, keeps him on the floor. Um, so hopefully that'll work out for him. Um, we will move on to round 11, keep this thing going before we wrap it up with round 12. Uh, Kelly Olenek started off round 11, and then Draymond Green, Bilal Koulibaly, Colin Sexton, Chris Paul, Clint Capella, which is who you went with. I went with Brandon Pajemski, and then Amen Thompson, Aaron Gordon, Ivitz Zubats, Mitch Robinson, and then Andrew Nimhard. I'm not sure if the Nimhard pick lined up directly with him playing really well in the Eastern <laughs> Conference Finals. This may have been even a little bit after that, um, but I guess it would have had to have been a little bit after that because we – Last time we were doing this, this pick hadn't been made and the finals were going on. But um, how do you feel about round 11? Uh, yeah, again, a few interesting picks, some some veterans, some young guys, um, Koulibaly, which still not really sure who he is, what his role is going to be in Washington. Um, but we probably saw enough that he's worth taking as a last round or a sort of really back-end pick. Um yeah, I went with Clint Capella. Again, I'm not excited about this pick at all, but and I'm pretty high on Onyeka Okongwu, so I, I am almost hoping that this pick doesn't turn out and that they they go with um, uh, with Okongwu as the starter and finally make that decision. And, I mean, maybe Capella is traded away, but I just feel like his floor is pretty safe if he's healthy. Um Again, double double. He'll get you. He's he's not the shot blocker he was five six years ago, but he'll still get you over a block a game. Um, free throws aren't great, but he doesn't really get there a lot. So he may only play 22, 24 minutes a night, but I still think he can sort of I don't know nudge the top one hundred in in limited minutes. Um, and I mean, at this point, when you're picking round eleven, round twelve. If the season starts and Okongwu is starting, Capella's playing 18 minutes off the bench, I just drop him and I pick someone up off waivers. So, yeah, I, I mean, I think you have to remember that if you look at your – go back and look at previous seasons and have a look at who you drafted, chances are the guys you took in round 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, whatever, however deep your league is. Yeah. In quite a few of those leagues, you probably drop those guys in the first – month of the season um potentially pick them up again at some point but these guys are expendable usually uh so yeah if it works out great if not i'll drop him and move on but um but i'm happy to get him here yeah and i 
imagine that Capella is not going to be a Hawk next season. Maybe I'm just yeah. getting ahead of myself here, but there was some rumors from earlier today uh, that the Grizzlies, Wizards, Pelicans, and Bulls are interested in Capella. And I would imagine that he's the starter on three of those four teams, except maybe not the Bulls uh, because of Vooch, but still maybe they want him to fill that Andre Drummond role. Cause now there's rumors that he's going to be gone, but I would say it's a pretty good chance that Capella is starting somewhere next year. Um, and he's going to, like you said, he'll, he'll be reliable. Not the most exciting pick, but he'll be reliable. Um, I went with Pajemski. I started going upside swings because I felt I did enough safe picks. Um, I think if there's a chance that, I mean, it seems like Clay Thompson is going to be gone. I would imagine that Pajemski slides into the starting lineup. And even if he's only playing 24, 26 minutes per game as a starter, happy to get a guy going into his second year that's moving into a starting role that provided well-rounded numbers as a rookie. So I'm happy with that pick late here. Um, a few other pun- fun picks like Koulibaly and Amen Thompson, but a lot of just solid veterans at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, you're right. And and yeah, on Nemhard, I mean, you touched on him. I, I don't know mm-hmm. what his role looks like next year. Um, <laughs> my next pick will, will probably impact what Nemhard's role looks like. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, look, he, he was good in the playoffs. Um, but I, I just, I don't know. I don't see him as a long-term starting difference maker or anything like that. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm okay to, to see him go here and just see what happens next season. But, um, yeah, again, not, not, not super exciting. Not expecting him to have more 30 point Eastern conference finals <laughs> games in his career against one of the best defenses we've seen in a while um final round went clay thompson casey wallace cam johnson Jaden ivy jaime Hawkes. i went taylor Hendricks. you went benedict matherin we got Jonas valentunas cam whitmore wendell carter vince williams and buddy healed you already mentioned it alluded to it a little bit you went matherin how'd you feel about that one uh yeah look i'm a little bit like your pick with um i can't remember who it was where you were chasing some point uh uh like tyler hero uh grayson just mm-hmm. trying to get some points late i mean i'm not yeah. i'm not sort of i don't have a strong points build here but um in roto it, it never hurts so no. yeah look i think we saw well for me watching the paces i, I watched them pretty closely during during the playoffs and Yes, they had a really good run. Um, they had some luck on their side, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think to me, I mean, Matherin was, he was okay when he was healthy this season. He was a bit up and down. He was, in terms of fantasy, he was on and off rosters, um, had some big games, then struggled for a while. But for me, the playoffs probably showed that they need him. They need him playing well, Um to provide that scoring punch, whether it's off the bench or not. Um, but they had um, – who was their guard who they were playing, who was shooting a lot of threes but not hitting any? I can't even think of his name. Oh, man, hang on. In I'm the gonna... starting lineup or off the no, bench? No, off the bench. Hang on, I'm going to have to – Oh, Ben Shepard? Yeah, yeah, Ben Shepard. So, again, I'm not – I'm no specialist when it comes to these young players coming in, but he was drafted – as a guy that could score off the bench and, and hit threes, and mm-hmm. he just didn't do it in that. Like I think it was for his first season. Obviously, it was a role that he probably wasn't expecting to play. Mm-mm. But they need Matherin filling that role. They need him coming off the bench, scoring 16, 17 points, hitting some threes, doing a bit of defensive stuff. So, with my last pick again, like I said with Clint Capella, I pick him up. He might play 30 minutes a night, average close to 20 points, perfect world, uh, and I love this pick. Um, but if if he's struggling, if he's inconsistent again, I drop him, I pick someone else up. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to take him here. Again, I'm not excited about it, but it's not it's not often you're excited about your last round pick, I wouldn't think. Um, so, yeah, I'm, o- I'm okay with him. And, and I guess, likewise, you went with Taylor Hendricks, who – whose role probably was a little bit bigger than he envisaged at, at times last season, but due to the Jazz not being very good and obviously resting or whether you want to say resting, but Lowry Markin was out for a significant portion there down the stretch. So, yeah, what 
Hendricks, what, what do you think his role looks like this season? It's tough to say with Utah. Like, are they going to try and win basketball games or are they going to give up again in February? Um, I don't know. I think we'll see what other moves they make this offseason. I think, like you said, like, it's not maybe not the safest pick, but it's the last round. So you don't want necessarily a safe pick. I would say that honestly, my last round pick is usually my most fun pick. I, it's usually my most exciting pick because it's probably one that I don't think is really going to pan out. But if it does, it's going to pan out really well. Um, I think he'll start off in a bench role behind Mark and then John Collins and Walker Kessler as the front court. Um, but I like his tools. I like him long term. I think eventually he's going to be a very, very good player in fantasy. And I'm hoping that it starts next season. Um, at least in small stretches, then eventually kind of carves into a really good, consistent role. Maybe they trade away John Collins. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see what it looks like. He's a he's a young, fun guy. I think, you know, that's what that's what I'm always looking to do in the last couple of rounds is get young guys. That it's like, hey, what if another guy that went Alex or clean got Casey Wallace? Who, if Josh Giddy is moved, mm. I think Wallace kind of moves into the starting lineup. So that could end up being a really, really good pick late. Um, Anything else stick out to you from this one, or we can go ahead and wrap it up? Uh, yeah, not really. Um, Vince Williams, interesting. Let's see. He was obviously very good uh, over the final few months of this season because the Grizzlies had everyone on the sideline. So, uh, but I think he did enough to earn himself a role. Um, what that role looks like, we'll, we'll find out when they're healthy. But um, yeah, again, an upside play. Um, Cam Whitmore, another one. Um, Huckers, yeah, it doesn't excite me that much, but he's pretty safe. Um, but if we just, I'm just quickly looking at the players that weren't drafted um, yep. and whether anyone sort of stands out as, wow, this guy should have been drafted. I, I guess <laughs> Keldon Johnson, maybe he was someone that had probably been drafted the last few years. But I think we saw them starting to move away from him last year. So, um, but I could almost guarantee that, like for example, I might if Benedict Matherin sucks, I would drop him and pick up Keldon Johnson because he might be scoring eighteen points a game or something like that. Um, oh, Gary Trent. There, yeah, I mean, look, there, there's no one. If I go through that list of. of players that are available no one jumps out as i can't believe this guy wasn't drafted i mean no. is there anyone for you there that that stands out um malik monk maybe um just given what he did uh but again yeah i don't i wouldn't say he's must roster but beyond that yeah there's not really anyone russell westbrook <laughs> interesting but I mean, it's warranted. I don't want Russ on a roto team. I'd be fine no. with him in a, you know, in a head to head, maybe, but I don't really want him to just randomly have a three for 22 game or anything like that. No. Um, but I think Malik Monk was probably the main guy that I was looking at. I mean, you could, like, Kelly Oubre is probably in, like right there at the top of the list. I think that's another guy. Um, but it's not, I'm not like mad that nobody took him. I, I get it. So I think you're right. I think probably a couple of those guys would have gone if there was another round or two, but. Um, no, I don't think there's anybody too devastating that, that they didn't go unless we just scroll down and everybody missed somebody just because they didn't have a high score on this or really low down the list, but not anybody that I can think of, I guess is what I'm trying to say. No. All right. So that'll do it for this one. Kingy, do you have anything coming up that we should keep an eye out for? Uh, nothing imminent. Um, we are getting some stuff ready in the background for the balls deep show to to get that up and going again probably in the next two weeks um i'll start doing those analyst interviews um beat up started sending me some new graphics and things so um so starting to get ready i'm assuming our draft only leagues will be starting where we're officially in the off season or the pre-season or however you want to look at it now um now that the finals are done um the draft is what a week, bit under a week away. So mm -hmm. I will probably roll out another <laughs> early mock draft once the draft has happened, just to see nice. if if any of the rookies are taken and and where they're taken. Um, 
I don't know. Maybe we'll even run a a, a dynasty mock, a startup dynasty mock, and, and I don't know. Let's you know see. I'm down. <laughs> yeah, I know you're down. Uh, and and we'll get, but <laughs> like obviously with these early mocks, we get a lot of the same people drafting, and and that's that's fair. Like um, not every, not all analysts are interested in doing mocks at this time of the year, and that's completely understandable. But if we were to do a dynasty. There's a few dynasty analysts um, that we could reach out to, so there might be some some fresh sort of content to talk about and that sort of thing. So maybe we'll look at doing uh, a dynasty mock um, in the next week to 10 days and, and maybe we could talk about that on the show. But, yeah, other than that, just getting ready for uh, for the preseason, which sort of, yeah, July will, it will sort of hit. Draft-only leagues will be rolling out and uh, and we'll be getting ready for October. Yeah. And with the draft coming next week, I don't know exactly what day this will come out. Um, but with it coming next week, I'm planning to do multiple live shows that everyone listening should be looking out for. to try and get some other analysts and draft guys on um, to talk about some prospects and then take any questions. So those should be live shows that I will tweet out. So keep an eye out for those. Um, but we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Kingy, thanks for joining me for this. No worries, mate. Fun, fun as always. Have a have a good evening over there. Yeah, and you have a good full entire day. <laughs> and I can see the the sun's creeping up now, so hopefully it, it doesn't get too cold there. But anyone listening, you guys can follow Kingy at Adam King ninety one. Follow me at Noah Rubin twenty two on Twitter. Uh, but that's going to do it for this episode, and we will see you next time. So thanks for listening. You just listened to another episode from the Fantasy Basketball International Podcast Network. Thanks for joining us. And for more information about joining our community, please check out our website at fbibasketball.com.